this is Barbarian, a game where you play a barbarian who became disgruntled with his life as a barbarian, decided he really wanted to rock out on his axe. And so let us see how this goes. As you can see, I've put rather a bit of time in this. Um, it's strangely compelling, and I think I only paid a couple bucks for it on a Steam sale, and it was definitely worth that. So you can also see there's stuff that you can upgrade, and I have upgraded everything. So take from that to basically mean that this game has has some legs and you can play it for a while originally you only start off with these three guys the archer the brawler and the black mage and the classes don't really do a lot to make themselves all useful i have never used most of these in fact um i hardly use any of these um, I'll go ahead and start, uh, I guess, I guess we could start with day two. There's a, there's the whole campaign, which is the day one with the, with the, um, mo morning, noon, evening, and night stages. That's the story campaign. And there's a little intro that you can play that will give you the story of how he makes his axe. And when you play through that, you only have access to three characters. And throughout most of it, I hardly used any of them. I started off with just the archers. When I got the white mage, the, this healer, um, I didn't use her at all. But I had her available, I guess. The ninja was pretty cool. And then when I got the necromancer, um, that was actually the turning point for where I started actually being able to do a lot of interesting stuff with the game. So basically, you run around and you don't do anything except play your axe. So you summon a whole bunch of dudes to go out and and basically crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of their women. And you can't do anything other than just run around and have your dudes follow you, which is kind of really frustrating in a lot of ways because you feel like you should be able to have your your guys do stuff and then you support them more than just providing a uh, a buff for them every so often. And the class balance leaves a lot to be desired. As I said, I basically only played through the game with a couple characters and even the ones that are there that I do end up using, like the healer that I'll pull out in just a second, um, are really, I don't want to say badly designed, but they're badly designed. I'm going to pull out the healer, um, take some damage here, so she's got something to do. And basically, she heals you only when you're standing still. And if you can see her health bar, notice that she, basically she's like a, an emo healer. She kills herself to heal you guys. And that is very frustrating because she does not heal herself. And if you have more than one healer, um, you, you can't, they can't heal each other. So you feel kind of basically like she, she takes up one of the slots in your party. And it, it just creates a lot of, of hectic chaos that makes it so that you can try to micromanage them and, and hope that you get uh, bacon from your butcher over here to heal so that you can use her longer. You can also upgrade her, so I guess she has more health and heals longer, but that's not really obvious. As a matter of fact, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Um, but basically you go through and your job is to just avoid stuff. And then sit there and, and I guess, run your kamikaze zombies through people, make more zombies, collect gold, 
and then there's going to be a point where you've upgraded everything and there's no use for gold anymore. And and this is basically all the game is. There's only this one map that lets you defend, I guess, because you only have the one town. I'd hope that once you got to day two, there would be more towns to defend or that you got a larger area, but there isn't. Um, we're now getting into the more interesting characters, uh, more interesting villains. There are these little rocket dudes that come out every so often, and they're very annoying because although they don't attack you, they do kamikaze rather hard. They're the football players, and they're annoying because, well, I guess they're football players, and they're supposed to be. Uh, there's also some beholders, and, you know, it's just general dudes. But this is essentially the entire game, running around and avoiding stuff. And you'd think that this is kind of lame, and... And it is, to be fair. But that doesn't stop it from being enjoyable. And it's a nice, mindless little treat. The uh, mobile version has in-app purchases to buy gold and to, I guess, double your gold drops. Um, I'm kind of pleased that the actual PC version doesn't have that. See, there you saw my, my white mage just die, which is very frustrating. And like, if you wanted to, you could make all kinds of claims about sexism and treatment of women and how they're just objects to be used to uh, make men's lives easier and stuff. And if it pleases you to make those assumptions, go for it. I will just say that it's bad, bad game design because you're you end up punishing the player for trying to strategize oh that was a bit more kamikaze than i thought but you, you're essentially punishing the player for for trying to proactively keep your your dudes alive i think that if her health regened on its own even if it was slowly uh that would be one thing at lower levels in early play, you actually do get that because every time she levels up, she heals to full health. So you could kind of game that out. Makes your magical followers spawn at higher levels. And then you get a, a little tower dude at, the, at your house to help defend who does virtually nothing. So, But this kind of castrates your healer because you're you're just making your far more disposable um but i guess you know that's a design choice that they went in the steam version has the these three guys as unlockables i have no idea what game this is from octodad obviously is from octodad and this is meat boy slash binding of isaac um, but other than that, I think that if you'll play this game, you will absolutely get a couple dollars worth of enjoyment out of it. And then you'll eventually do everything and you can either decide on your own, whether you keep it or not uh, installed on your hard drive. I think it's only 180 megs. So, um, that's essentially nothing, but it does create a lot of. Of opportunity for just like mindless fun there are these two other gameplay styles where this is i suppose an endless runner that i haven't put in very much time into when you're low level this is good for getting those last few gold coins so that you can upgrade some tower unit but later on this is not a viable method for farming gold because it's just not. Now, this is going to allow me to demonstrate one of the things that I find to be really 
really annoying. And that's the travel time of the projectiles. So you see that one little bullet that's sitting there right there? These bullets last forever. And that makes trying to do stuff really difficult, especially in the main game, because since the projectiles are so long lived, they're very hard to get away from. And whether that's by design or just, I don't know, and maybe the only reason why they time out is because of wanting to keep decent frame rates. Um, see, I don't know. When you get the beholders coming out in the main game, they uh, they really wreak a lot of havoc because the projectiles from the beholders really last a long, long time. The other mode that you have is this survival mode. Survival mode is essentially you're going in with a vanilla character. There's no upgrades. There's no way to summon new units. There's just these dudes. And this is like the definition of of suffering because all you can do is run away from stuff. You can't summon more dudes. You generate uh, music that you use to, to cast your spells at an incredibly slow rate and things die so slowly because nothing is upgraded. I'm not even necessarily sure that the guys that you pick up level up but since keeping them alive is so difficult because they remain spread out and they do so little damage, it's very difficult. Um, but, you know, it's, I mean, it's not bad. It's just really, really frustrating. I will say that one thing it's good for is it's good for giving you an opportunity to mess around with all the different units, but kind of at random. But again, you can see where there's just a lot of, of stuff running around there that's hard to deal with. And if you lose all of your guys, you can either run around and hope that another uh, minion spawns, or you just run around and eventually die or commit suicide. But there gets to be a point where even if you're killing people, um, you can't you can't get in to collect the gold that drops from them because you are just so close that or not close, but <laughs> The monsters are so dense that you just can't get anywhere. So this is also not a viable method for farming gold for use in the main game. This is really just an excuse to run around and, and uh, well, you know, I, I don't know. I will say that this is how you unlock the Meat Boy slash Binding of Isaac character. So, I mean, that's one reason why you do it. But like that gold, I mean, there was no way I was going to get in there to get that. So this survival thing is is bullshit. Um, pretty much. There are leaderboards and there are people with like half hour times on that. And on one hand, I think, wow, they do really good at avoidance. They're really lucky. And why the hell would you play that for half an hour? And also for the... Uh, I haven't looked at, what, at the leaderboards for the escapes, But for the day two leaderboards, there's some guy that I saw that's up to wave 80. And that's impressive to me because I think I've maxed out around like day 30 something before I just couldn't avoid stuff. And it may also have to do with, with the units that I select. So, you know, take that 
you know, as you may, you may come into this and find find more diverse uses of it. Um, this Storm Knight, which you unlock last, is total badass. He's really useful. I really like the Necromancer because I like the uh, making the Kamikaze zombies, but the amount of damage he does is basically worthless. And this guy does a snare when he does a crit. Um, so that's helpful. Other than that, I, I don't really like anything. I think that there are some balancing things that the guy could do. And there is one upgrade in here, the town pet. He runs around and collects gold. When you get this, this is the first thing you upgrade before everything else, because having him pick up your gold for you, there's no other way around it. That That is just what you have to do. But anyway, I would say if you have a few bucks to spare and you're looking to have a game that'll last you for, you know, clearly several hours, uh, this is absolutely one to consider. Because, you know, as you know, I'm at 15 hours on this game and I'm probably done with it, but it was an enjoyable 15 hours.